Welcome to the upstreamlife.com. I'm your founder and editor, Vishal Krishna. I've discussed this many times before. You know, I'm perhaps the first guy who left farming in my family, and it has really affected many of us because we have sold our land. We are subject to global economics. But there are many of you who can come back to farming, and that's what my next guest is going to tell you about, and he's going to help you. He is the founder of Akshay Kalpa. It's Sashi. Sashi, how are you? Hey, Vishal. Doing good. Thank you. What are we going to talk about in the podcast, Sashi? It's all farming. Yeah, I think um, farming is what actually gives life to us. Um, I think probably it's the time, right time we wake up, start understanding farming better. Uh -huh. yeah. And they can come back, all the engineers, all the others in the cities, if they own farmland, they can go back to farming. See, absentee farming doesn't work. Okay, if you are an engineer, leave your job and go on to farming. Actually, it's viable. It is viable, yeah. and you've proved it, right? It's yes. fifteen years for you. Yes, fifteen years. It took fifteen years. And if you haven't checked them out, check out that app. It's called Akshay Kalpa. Akshay Kalpa yeah. app. Yeah. And they've fixed the supply chain, the fruits and vegetables, and all of you know them with the milk that you consume. Mm -hmm. I consume the milk. Download that app and uh, enjoy the podcast. Sashi sir, how are you? Doing good. I. Uh, Akshay Kalpa, big fan. Uh, I want to know two things. You're an engineer. Not many of them would know it. Why did you become a farmer? Come back to farming. See, becoming an engineer is, uh, I should say, it's a familial pleasure. Okay, like any child born in a rural setup. Okay, my father is a good farmer. Now he's now also he farms. But uh, when I was born, he never wanted me to be a farmer. Why is that? See, I think it's a uh, it's what. Uh, the most of the farmers in the country feel that their children should never become uh, farmers. See, one saying is there in Canada, very painful saying. Please tell me. Okay, that saying is, Nan saya, okay, nanam neen saya, manayilla saya, adu vev saya. So, so, it's a very painful saying. So, my father strongly believes that. Okay, no children should get into farming. And it's true for every, okay, uh, father or a mother. Okay, because they lost money. No, they right. lost money, unpredictability. Yeah. There no money, there no income, okay, continuous income. And they can't even meet sometimes basic needs of children mm -hmm. and themselves. A lot of issues with uh, medical, uh, uh, this one. And uh, rural setups are extremely bad. Uh, they are seen, okay, that uh, bad part of being a farmer, and they don't want their children to be a farmer. I, I'm I'm a classic case for that. And um, day when I was born, I think my father kept on telling your only job is physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology. Hundred out of hundred, you have to score. Okay, and get into free seat. That point of time, it is yeah, because, free seat. because scholarship to scholar, you, you, yeah. you have no money to give capitation fee. So yes, you have to get a government seat. For us, it's called government seat then. Okay, and uh, when I completed uh, uh, my 10 plus 2, when I wrote uh, CET. CET and get into engineering. Okay. Um, so that's how I became an engineer. So it's not the engineering skills, nothing. Nothing. You're forced into it. Yes. Uh, because of circumstances. Yeah. My whole issue here is two things, sir. We're, you know, we all do it because of the pressure of our parents, uh, especially a lot of us in the modern world. But there is a history to this. Your father had suffered in farming and that sickness had continued for at least 100 years, right? What has changed? Let's go to the history of farming quickly and come back to, you know, how did you become a farmer again? Um, the problem was we started putting chemicals. Is that Does it start 100 years ago or is it as recent as 50s, 60s? So, no, the transformation started probably 100 years back. Yes. And what you are seeing is the okay, outcome of that. Yeah. See, farming actually was seen as a livelihood. Okay. So you would grow, okay, okay, whatever, okay, you want to eat, okay. and what is surplus you used to actually sell. Okay. That was a that was an agrarian life. Yes. Okay, I'm not saying it is perfect, but that's what it is. Yes. But then, for various reasons, okay, of evolving cities and towns, people started migrating, okay, from rural setup to a town or a okay city setup. Yeah. So now, therefore, they need access to food. So then we started engineering farming to meet the people who went there. To the cities. Cities, yes. okay. Now that is called market orientation of farming. Mm -hmm. So where a farm, which is to have a backyard poultry, little bit of a dairy, okay, little bit of a ragi, little bit of a paddy, 
they needed some fruits, some vegetables, okay, whole things which he was used to grow, now it became a single crop entity so that aggregators can aggregate from multiple people and supply to cities and towns where the money was. Right. So that transformation led to, okay. Uh, Migration. Yeah. A lot of people became traders. Traders, okay. Yes. And uh, they started accumulating, okay, a lot of things from multiple farmers and uh, started supplying to cities and markets. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. But the farming itself in a original way, it got changed. So it was intensified to do m m bigger crop. things yes. or single crop. Yes, single crop and grow only one monocrop. And diversity was forgotten, right. which is farms right. are extremely diverse. Right. Uh, even at least my how would family. you say your father's uh, land was? Was it diverse? Yes, it was extremely diverse. Okay, we had a little bit of a coconut. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit of a um, a backyard poultry mm -hmm. dairy. We had mm -hmm. we had we used to grow ragi. In between ragi, eight to nine crops we used to grow. Puchal in the head do. Okay, aurika in the head do. Jol in the head do. Saswa in the head do. Ragi in the head do. In the head though. Everything we used to grow in that okay in, in that six months period. Okay, starting from July, okay, till November, December mm -hmm. time frame. It's where okay. So uh, your dad understood the reason to have diversity yes, also. Yes. That's got to do with ecology. We'll get into yes. the ecology because that's important for you. Although he did that, he still didn't want you to become a farmer because, because, because there's of what? unpredictability. Okay. Uh, now rains are not there. Mm. The crop is not coming. Okay, and we also got into pressure of various things. For example, I still remember 1980, and we were all small kids, maybe nine year old, okay. ten year old kids. Okay, at that point of time, uh, he started growing tomato. Okay, very small patch, around two acres patch, and he had got a five thousand rupees he had to borrow at that point of time to do that crop. And one alical, what we call as hailstorm, mm -hmm. came and destroyed, decimated the entire crop. 5,000 rupees in debts, 1981. That's like 50 lakhs today. Yeah, yeah, probably around 10, 15 yeah. lakhs today. Yeah. So, and uh, all at sea, you know. Yes. Did he sell the land at that time? So, some of the things what we used to do, he stopped. He didn't sell the land, he stopped. He stopped taking risks. Yeah. He stopped taking risks and probably started yeah. going to city and do some work and come back yeah. and feed the family. That's exactly how, okay, it all uh, transpired. So yeah. no wonder nobody wants to be a farmer. Nobody wants yeah. to be a farmer. So risks associated with us are too humongous. Parents actively discourage children to be farmers. So it's the history itself. One is the migra migration yeah. to the cities 100 years ago, where everybody intensified into single yeah. crop, but nobody prepared them for rainfall failures yeah. or, you know. We were never prepared yes. for all these crises we are yeah. seeing. There were no interventions. Climate crisis, okay, water crisis, yeah. okay, uh, the management uh, Seeds have changed substantially. Yeah. Genetically kind of, modified. Yeah, yeah, so seed industry is quite big. Chemical industry is quite big. Very big. Okay, <laughs> uh, we, we can't talk against them. So that has morphed, okay, farming, okay, into, see, imagine, no, you have seen my fa father, say, his, his ego is so artful, he still farms okay. because his father has passed on something to him. He has to preserve it. So that's what he, that is his thought. Now he's 82 years old, he's still mm -hmm. farms, struggles. I keep asking, why are you doing it? My father gave me something, I need to continue. Yeah, to that's, farm. that's good. That's, okay. I mean, it keeps him busy. Yes. But none, I mean, none, I'm going to Canada now. Sorry, forgive me, guys. What happened are two things, right? You came back with knowledge this yeah. time knowledge of IT systems, uh, knowledge of farming because of the legacy. Uh, when you started combining the two, uh, first, thing, were you prepared? Did you know these problems at hand? The fact is that there is a supply chain that's broken, uh, soil is eroded, right? Unpredictable, unpredictability of rainfall. Uh, would you know all these three things now that you'd come to the city and lived and uh, become a you know very senior engineer, right? Uh, when you went back, how did you start handling each of these? I'd like to know because you started with what two acres or three acres, and probably what five farmers or three farmers. Yeah. Now we have more than thousand farmers, right? See, honestly, the answer is no. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay, I only thing I knew was my father's perspective of farming. Yeah. Don't do farming. But when we started in 2010, okay, around 27 people, we came out. Okay, we thought we'll change farming and we'll go and do something. When we started going deeper and deeper into farming, it was very apparent what my father was saying. It was very really apparent. Okay. So you realized what, why you he didn't want to. Why he didn't want, okay. 
the fundamental problem of farming is there's no cash flows okay which are monthly regular yes okay or maybe six monthly regular yearly regular yes there's no cash flow systems okay in farming doing that even if it exists a lot of risks are associated with that rain is under not under risk control weather not under risk control pests are not under risk control market is not under risk control seed is not under risk control but manure is not under control nothing is under control in in the in the area where he can't control anything and he is actually trying to make his living. So imagine kind of risk. Okay. So you are doing a business where you are not in control of anything. Anything. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Great example I give is Tipro, Tipro Kobri. Yes. Tipro Kobri is famous in India. Very popular, yes. Okay. Sweet Copra. Okay. And their it, oils are supposed to be the best, yes, by the way. Yes, okay, yeah. And the Kobri, okay, the Copra prices yes. for quintal varies from 7,000 to 21,000. Okay. Okay. And you tell Price me. Price variation. So you. Yeah. The, uh, what is the true value of Cobra? Uh, Nobody knows. <laughs> Farmer sells it because he has no other option. So yeah, if he keeps because it. Because he's grown it. He has grown he it and he needs it. cash. Okay. Modern world demands cash. And uh, he sells it. Okay. Have we discovered the price since? What could be the average? Yes. Yeah, see, a lot of exercises have happened. Intellectual <laughs> exercises, I would call. <laughs> Greatest intellectual exercise that has happened is MSP. <laughs> Okay. In what the minimum support price? <laughs> Forgive me for laughing. That's so true. Okay. That is and, so uh, true. It's, a, it's an intellectual exercise. People <laughs> sitting in okay in some policy rooms yeah. and making MSP. MSP doesn't work. Yes. Okay. No, it's just no, an no. intelligent guess. No, no, no. I will tell you what is MSP is doing. Yes. Take people, see, I'm fairly aware of. See, milk is not under MSP. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you take copra, is under MSP. Yes. Okay. Now. MSP price eleven thousand two hundred rupees. Okay, plus state government mm -hmm. is approximately mm -hmm. comes to twelve thousand rupees per quintal. Mm -hmm. Government buys at that price and puts it back into market at eight thousand rupees. Wow, it's a four thousand rupee loss subvention. No, no, no <laughs> subven subvention. It's okay, okay, but the price will never reach beyond twelve thousand. We have ensured that farmer actually remains poor. So we really don't understand these dynamics at all. So we have not understood farm economics. No, no, we have not understood farm economics. Actually, we trade. Huh? You move that goods from here to here, sell from him to him. Okay, oh, these are delta made. Okay, these are money coming back. That's what we are thinking. But we are not gone into farming. I, farming. I keep saying this, sir. When you Google farmer in India, an old man crops up with a, yes. you know, with a broken face and a stick. That's our idea of farming. No, it's terrible. No, that's true because all the farmers in the country today are aged above 55, almost my age. Okay, and uh, you know, there are the people who are producing food for us. We like it or not, that's a fact. So there are no youngsters in the farming. Yeah, nobody so was coming to it. A country which is 30 years as an average age of hmm. Indian, very young country, the age of a farmer is 55. In 20, 30 years, there will be nobody producing food for us. It's, it's scary and India can become an importer now of food. That's, see, that's going to be a bad situation. So the us. importer is, okay, in my opinion, tolerable. But the food which is coming from, which is not under our control, mm -hmm. is most dangerous. <laughs> Again, it's not under our control. It's, it's funny. Ab absolutely not under our control. Let's, let's now get into the brass tacks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the brass tacks are, how do we fix this? Because you were right. It was never about the economics. It was about the agri-climatic okay. zones. Mm -hmm. It begins there and then economics can fix itself. It's like fixing your gut. When you're eating healthy, your mind is healthy. It's, then you can go work and get money and everything. It's yeah. a similar analogy. I wonder, So how do, you, how do you fix this? Let's start. Uh, let's say an average farmer today who's still in the 40s, maybe a few early 50s. And you are one of the proponents of saying reverse migration. Yeah. Come back and start farming. You own land. That's the best business to be in. And I think you should prove to everybody today and why farm economics works if you understand the climate. Let's start what you've done and then uh, go into the nitty gritties of uh, the subjects. Yeah, see, the concept is very simple. Okay. Consider farm as a kite. Okay. Kite has to fly. Yes. Okay, that's a fundamental duty of a mm -hmm. kite. Mm -hmm. If farming has to work, okay, flying, if you want to equate to, okay, working, farm, okay, economics have to work. That is very, very critical. So, we need to really understand where are the economics coming from. Mm -hmm. Economics, actually right now, the way we dictate is, you give a lot of inputs, good seeds, great seeds, okay, good manure, great manure, chemical manure, sprays, 
okay and implements biggest tractors okay biggest harvesters biggest everything everything is there as an yeah. input to the farm okay we expect economics to work with these inputs inputs are given output will come that's what okay a typical factory okay factory you give an input you get an output farm is not farm actually is not a factory the farm has got two more angles one is of course input angle another is economic angle and it has got two other angles called diversity and ecology so diversity is how many market facing entities the farm has okay, okay. Yeah, so you have got milk you have got little bit of coconut yeah. little bit of grains vegetables potato poultry. onions okay back at poultry okay little bit of a mushroom little bit of if we can diversify that okay and also ecologically it becomes sound what is ecology we are part of ecology animals are part of ecology soil is ecology microbes is ecology the manure is ecology bird is ecology tree is an ecology okay yeah. everything we are part of a bigger ecological system farm is one such ecological entity what is farming okay has been ages is you diversify ecologically you okay become part of it yes you are not outside of it don't destroy it become part of it when you are part of it you protect it that is what actually leads into economics what is economics end of the day for being right. grown okay for our life that's what sustains but input driven models right. extreme okay input driven models actually will break this stretches the kite mm. okay mm. and the, stretch a kite kite won't fly yes kite needs to be balanced inputs also are required mm. but needs to be a balanced kite diversity okay. ecology economics and the inputs they need to coexist this is a fundamental principle of a any farming ecosystem of course there are other diversities we can add angles we can add bare ayamangalu kuda nodabodu adre in all kaayamangalu ittkondu principles ittkondu how do you make a farm work yeah. okay this is fundamental no so, so that's the ecosystem it all so there's this big corporations that control the yes. inputs agree yes. from uh, tractors to seeds to fertilizers to pesticides yes then we have the farmer himself yeah. who has to realize that okay he has to diversify uh And, and ecologically be sound correct and ecologic and mm-hmm. grow crops and matter to that region Car- correct right so therefore oh. what has happened okay what what has to happen is integration of animals okay mm-hmm. into the farming mm-hmm. is the key so what animal does is a beauty right okay animal okay take cow as an example what do cow does okay we 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 uh, we make puja of a cow yeah. but what cow does cow actually eats something useless to us that is cellulose grasses mm-hmm. as a humans we can't digest grasses it eats mm-hmm. and it converts that one into two beautiful entities one is food which is fat and protein mm-hmm. comes in milk mm-hmm. second thing is dung yes okay which is soil facing so any farm without this integration of an animal okay leaves a big hole okay now once you integrate animals your cash flow modern ecosystem mm-hmm. cash flow systems actually start working when you got access to dung now dung in itself is not a great manure lot of people will make a mistake saying that ah dung is a great manure it is not dung is enabler to make a manure okay what is required lot of agricultural waste tree trimmings therefore you have to integrate your boundary with hedge crops glycidia simetangri any crops you integrate you chaff them and okay. use them the you use them along with the dung so you're making your own natural manure. fertilizer exactly you have to make manure which is rich in organic carbon so that's what akshay kalpa does not many people do exactly this is what we do mm-hmm. we integrate animals take the milk out which is market for a uh, farmer second thing is take the dung and make manure at a scale yeah. and go put that on the soils and manage soils then question is what is management of a soil it's a it's a statement management of a soil is there are three fundamental principles of a management of a soil one is how do you avoid top soil erosion yeah which is what's happened what happened is eroding. last 50 years yes. so 71 so therefore yeah. any farm needs to have a trenching and bunding okay so that water is actually retained no top soil erosion happens <laughs> then we need to build hedges hedges is a crops basically boundary crops mm. okay where they enable only is act as a wind barrier mm-hmm. and second thing is they house lot of biodiversity 
starting from here. Snakes, giving life back to the soil. Life back to the soil, to birds, everything. Yeah. Actually builds biodiversity where it helps your crops. Actually, you, you might see it as, a, oh, it is not helping my crops. Mm -hmm. It is not. So the hedging is very important. Third important aspect is harvesting the rainwater. Which we've never done well. Never. No. So we have been doing well. Okay? Canada, okay. Canada, 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 Canada. We don't know how, the, how to save it. Every drop it falls on your soil. We should not let it go. Hmm. We should actually allow it to seep in. Seep in, and seep in. Thinking, how do you do that? In the old days we did that. No, no? for example, this bunding and trenching. Yes, bunding is the Trenching. Right. Actually, yes. retains the water. Correct. If excess water is done, okay, we have to intelligently route that one to your farm pond. Hmm. Farm pond construction is very simple. Around 30,000 to 40,000 rupees. If we invest, we can do a beautiful farm pond. It yes. takes that water and sinks that water and creates a microclimate within the farm. Correct. Thumb rule is every three acres of a land should have one farm pond. Okay. okay. It doesn't take much of a time. This one, 30 feet by 30 feet by 15 feet. That's yes. it. I have a question if you may answer it. I've traveled to many parts of South India where uh, there is a Hachkat and Tarala, they have a they have a huge lake mm -hmm. and they have agriculture this yes. side. Were they sort of ponds type or they are they're not natural lakes for sure. Somebody's created these lakes. Are they historic lakes, mm -hmm. older, who created them? See. Was it, is that the right way forward? But I, I know the concept of farm ponds, it's important for individual yes. farmers to realize it. But what about these old large lakes? Was it yes. to, was it because of these single crop uh, problems that we had? No, no, see the, the amazing okay, what you call water water management systems existed uh -huh. from ages. Uh -huh. These were part of it. Uh -huh. Okay, what happened? The moment we forgot, uh -huh. okay, that this entire excess water flow uh -huh. in a village can be put it in a place. In Canada, what is called a kele, kele. Yes, kere, yes. Okay, in English, you can call it a small lake. Yeah. Okay. And this helped to recharge your groundwater. Uh, groundwater. Only shallow aquifer uh -huh. and deep aquifer. Yes. Now, over a period of time, these have been ignored. Mm. All the okay catchment for this mm. okay is gone. Okay, you destroyed the commons. Mm. Commons is mm. uh, common land yes. along the village. Okay, you destroyed agricultural lands. Okay, you destroyed everything which was left in villages. Mm. Where is the catchment? There's no catchment. No. These lakes started dying. So when the lake started dying, the groundwater recharging stopped. Mm -hmm. So this is what has happened. Now it has become a crisis. Kolar kade odre, which is my town. Saavar da ino ready sir. I know that. One the board will saavar da ino ready. Lapa saavar da ino ready niir oog be kandre, which would have taken minimum thousand years. Yeah, thousand five hundred feet below, guys. Yes. What he's saying is it's true because I've and the World Bank tried to revive the older models in yes. that region, but then again there was optics in many ways. Nim experience, and you know, it be coming back to the ecology part yes. of it, biodiversity in terms of the hedge crops yeah. and the multiple crops, right? And uh, water management. Uh, this is offered as a service to farmers out there, or all our farmers, it... we offer a service. Mm -hmm. Every farm in Akshakalpa network is mandatory to do that. Okay, hedging, mm. bunding, trenching, mm. diversity, mm. integration of a animal city the system. Okay, huge manure making. Okay, diversifying themselves, starting from beekeeping. Mm. Okay, to dairy. Okay. okay, to vegetables and grains. Okay, to coconut. Okay, banana. That's how we diversified mm. these farms. Okay, now because our objective is also to get people back to farming. I want you to tell them that, okay, you may be in an IT job earning 60,000 rupees as a 27-year-old, maybe looking at a low-end developer, but they own five acres mm. and they grow tomato. Let's take Kolar only. Most of them grow yes. uh, horticulture, mostly tomato and tomato is always messed up in Kolar. It's been an age-old problem. Even with water being available in Kolar, the farmer has no control over the pricing. Sometimes the price of tomato is five rupees. Sometimes it's gone up to 105 rupees. It's a very interesting situation. So. With this as a hypothesis, why should they come back to farming and how? You've given them a foundation of how Akshay Kalpa's method helps. Uh, why should more farmers sign up with you? How do they sign up with you, especially the educated lot who have given up on farming, but they can see money in this model. What is the timeline to the farm economics? Five years, six years, do they have to make any investment? See, what is that we need to do in farming is the gambling aspect of farming. Mm, should go away. It should go away. There should be some predictability on what we do. Yes. 
to restore the farmer's confidence that hey you know what i am doing as it is predictable okay i can get an income so that is the fundamental way we have solved the way we approach to farming so dairy has become a central to that it has given him a daily cash flows okay now using dung now we have diversified the farm to an extent at an akshakalpa takshakalpa average farmer actually today is earning 100000 rupees a month which is good which is 1 lakh which is great in tax free Net. okay okay so <laughs> so another thing that you kids yes. have to realize it is tax free okay and uh, so what is that as this one is it has put that imagination back in young people hey you know he has become very successful in farming so if you ask me consider me no i am an engineer okay why did i become an engineer because my father no saw one good engineer in bangalore he wanted me to be an engineer Yeah. isn't it yeah, not is. that i had a great engineering skills that's not true what is required for the country right now is every village having this one farmer every village can look up to saying that he is living great of his life mm-hmm. he is taking care of his parents yeah his medical expenses he is taking care mm-hmm. sending kids to very good uh, schools okay and having a good okay home and of course he can travel in his own car these are the things which are required for a modern world you like it or not okay you can be very altruistic oh you know kannadadalli yen irthive no swar gadegal irthive onde enappa andre haldi jeevana sundara anta adu nija alla sir haldi jeevana yavaga sundara agutte andre avan kayalli duddi tag out illidra it is drudgery yarigu artha agodilla idu so idanna sari madodike ig akshakalpa madalu idin tiddidivi onna nalli ga obobar netha ready madidivi Our note only bear or all market try market. How many such champions do you have? Thousand two hundred farm. Those are thousand average age. Average age is thirty two years. Thirty two. So these these guys are come come back. Come back. So yeah. they have been cab drivers. Yeah. Okay, they have been watchmen. Yeah. They had a decent land holding. They had left it and gone because of last. So of they've done year. everything that you asked them to do. Yes. Uh, so say let's say average holding one acre. Yeah. Uh, they've left the driving job yeah. in one of these car railing apps. Uh, did they have to invest up front? No. So no, see because they already own the land. Correct. So exactly. they would have had a coconut mostly. They would have a coconut. In Kolar, it'll be ragi or tomato, yes. one of these things. And in Tumkur, uh, it'll be coconut plus. Yeah, if you take else. Tiptur as an example, uh, please let's coconut. Yes. Okay. And uh, what is required is a management practice uh-huh. change. Uh-huh. Okay. Now let us assume what is the fundamental change. Cut the external inputs. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay. Reduce your burden. Cut it. What is the external input which is coming? You are getting manure. Yes, you are getting okay NPK. Uh-huh. You are getting urea. You are getting all of it. Uh-huh. So the moment you say cut it, so what is the alternative? You need to provide alternative yes. also. Yes, you can't say cut it. You will not trust you. Uh-huh. So therefore, teach him how to make manure in the resources what he has. Okay, and ask him to integrate cows so that that resource of the manure making uh-huh. becomes okay soil enriching, uh-huh. and also he gets a okay regular cash flows. This is around two years journey. Okay, and the buyback is at Shikalpa, or he sells directly to market. So, initial first two years, he will continue to sell, okay, where he wants to sell. Okay. Post that, okay, after two years of conversion management mm-hmm. change, okay, looking at farmer is willing to adapt what we are saying, then then we actually full time onboarding. Okay. So that is when actually we link him to banks, mm-hmm. okay, to get the financing organized. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So enter at Shikalpa farms get financed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Either by commercial banks, okay, okay, or by NBFCs. So this is exactly how the tie-up we have, and post that every aspect of the farm, tenching, bunding, hedging, crop integration, dairy, okay, yeah. multiple crops. We start integrating them over a period of five to seven years. You have to remember that. Got it. For okay. the first two years, yes. when I come on board, uh, where I'm just trying to change the land, yes. how much investment do I need to make? No investment. Okay. Management change. the way you are managing farms have to change okay. so investments in farm is not viable okay. if you can't guarantee returns okay. it is not like a factory a lot of people think ha let's put up front 10 lakh capital it's a disaster no, okay farming is a disaster so what we need to teach is cash flows manage your cash flows manage your cash flows no one time investments okay. okay let me say if you buy a cow for 60000 rupees you should be able to make around 90000 to 120000 rupees in that lactation okay. and look after the cow better okay. she can see so time okay so that the cow okay can give one more calf okay. okay in a proper time frame that is what we need to teach 
more often than not, what happens? They've got a cow. She doesn't conceive on time. So it stops milking. Uh-huh. You get into trouble. So we need to change that okay paradigm. Uh-huh. So that's the management change. First two years, he undergoes this management change. Okay, does he have to prepare for saying that, okay, I have to self-fund this at, the, at those two years? I mean, no. it's a good thing to say. No, no, there's no need to self-fund. Either he has or one or two cows, uh-huh. he has to start with that. Okay. So, okay, there's no need for a self-fund. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you uh-huh. have, but they need to typically have some savings. Some, sa- some yeah, savings. savings. So. Okay, interesting. So, then it works. So, 1,500 farmers today have made it work mm-hmm. and you're going to increase this across the country. No. No? Only in Tiptur? No. So, oh. right now, the thought is... Mm-hmm. We can't do it. As I told you, yeah. it's a mistake yeah. if we do it across the country. Yeah. This model has to get adapted to each agro climatical conditions in the country. Okay, got it. 15 zones clearly been marked out. Right now, we are got in one zone, Tiptor. Uh, so you said Tiptor, great. Um, rainfall is about 700 mm there, yeah, and, and you're and experimenting there. 500 to 700 mm. meters, and that is one agro climatic yes. region. India has 15 agroclimatic zones. I had no idea. I always thought about it as a soil based, but it's agroclimatic right. based. So, a lot of, uh, okay, second cluster is in Chengalpattu right now. Mm-hmm. We started working six years back, 2019. Now, Chengalpattu is in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Okay, and uh, near near Pair, Panchayat, around 95 kilometers south of Chennai. Yeah. Okay. There is a different agroclimatic region. So four, five mm-hmm. months. It rains cats and dogs, 1,400 millimeters rain. Mm-hmm. Paddy is a disaster crop. Okay, okay paddy yeah. actually decimated entire livelihoods there. Okay, this jungle pet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would they grow paddy there? Because I thought Godavari and all those places were okay for mm-hmm. rice. No, that's how it is. The rain came, mm-hmm. okay, and people got used to paddy. It got adjusted to paddy, and uh, MSP systems actually killed. This was land. the 70s, 80s. No, it has been there for last 20, 25 years. Okay. Okay, and that is second agroclimatic region where we are trying to understand farming, yeah. introduce okay animals in a structured manner. Yeah. Okay, and uh, can we farm yeah. in a profitable manner? Third yeah. cluster is very interesting. Gadwal, Mahbub Nagar, and uh, uh-huh. Telangana. Yeah, yeah, little bit of a Rangaradi district in Telangana. Telangana. What happened post Telangana? Okay, um, the formation. So these areas, Gadwal, Rangaradi, and Mahbub Nagar. They've been fairly rain-fed uh, ecosystems, okay? The Krishna water, which came in, it converted them to monocrop. Correct. 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 Okay. Correct. And, and that's destroyed the ecology? Yeah, hey, ecology. What happened? The hey, ecology, uh, soil systems, part of ecology, for millions of years, they got adjusted to rain-fed systems, okay? But now what you got? You bought Canal. water. Now you stagnated water. So canal okay. irrigation really changed yes, the game. Yeah. Mm. Stagnated water, what happens? Salts okay. in the soil actually come up. Okay. okay, because water stagnation seals the soil, water percolation doesn't happen. Okay, yes, now millions of years a rain fed ecosystem you changed in 14 15 years. Okay, by bringing water, we think that's development, that is not development. So, we are actually killing the ecological systems which exist. That's the reason. Agroecology is very, very critical. Yeah. It's exactly how the forests are. Yeah. That's exactly how the food systems are. It's exactly how the animal population is. Why some animals exist in certain areas, some animals are not? Because they got adjusted to the Regions. agroecological regions. But what we have written is administrative boundaries. We believe Karnataka, we yeah. believe Telangana, we believe Tamil Nadu. Nature doesn't care. Nature only cares agroecological regions. So, so, when you move away from this, okay, that's where the farming becomes unviable. So, coming back to your question, this is exactly how we are expanding. We don't want to do all India. Go by one region by agroecological region by region. Set up a research station there. Understand that agronomy in and out. And only do practices relevant to that area. That is what is required. This is a 100 to 200 years vision. We leave, we will not leave. But we need to put an institution systems in place. It actually takes this work, what we have done in Akshay Kalpa, the next two generations. Years. Hmm. That's what we want to do. The re- that I need to remember why. Because there is no farming school in the country. 
we have agricultural colleges. Yeah, you read my mind. We have university of agriculture. But, but we don't have a farming school. Okay. How the farming school happened was, my grandfather taught to my father. My father taught to me. It was passed on from generations to generations, generation to generations. That generations understood every piece of the Islam. What grows? When to grow? How to plow? Which tree grows? Which tree doesn't grow? Where, which crop grows? Which crop doesn't grow? They understood the ecology of his farm in and out as a family. Yeah. But when farming became, became unviable, these people started leaving farming. That knowledge transfer stopped. Yeah. So therefore, we forgot the ecological aspect of farming. Yeah. We bought in crops, mana crops. Okay, get okay one crop and get it done. So, what Akshay Kalpa is doing is trying to revive these farming practices by making a package of practices, putting a research station in that area. That research station, developing that package practices, yeah. work with farmers. Okay, in and around. One of the models I copied, okay, was when you travel from um, San Francisco mm. towards uh, Hollywood, okay? Mm. To then, LA, yes. Okay, okay. You go then, south, yeah. Yeah, there's a valley called Salinas Valley. Mm. Salinas Valley grows all the tabletops America needs. Tabletop is before the meal, actually, you eat some greens, salads, okay, salads you eat. there's mm. a tabletops, okay? And you call Berkeley agricultural extension. They don't have a campus. Mm -hmm. They go where the farm is. And they learn there. Mm -hmm. No, they, then they work with farmers, understand the ecology, mm -hmm. give the services. Entire Akshay Kalpa extension system, outreach program I have modeled on that. Today, Akshay Kalpa out of 1,000 people employees, we have got 200 people extension agents. They actually go and work with farmers. These are agronomists? Yeah, these are most of the trained agronomists. Yeah. Okay. So uh, each region will have an agronomist. Then. Agronomist, yeah. We need to put a collection of these agronomists where they can go and work with a farmer and make farming work. Yeah. And it's funny, most of them would be thinking, ah, Vishal, are you doing a, a intellectual thing in agriculture? Are you talking Akshay Kalpa? <laughs> in fact, to talk Akshay Kalpa, these are the things we need to talk about, right? You're also a consumer brand. Right, you've done your own milk, very successful. People know, uh, people buy it on your app. Although I buy it in other apps, I'm going to try out your app after today because of the fruits and vegetables. You mentioned you also yes. grow fruits and vegetables, which I didn't know. Um, the interesting aspect is that transition that you made. Yeah. How easy was it? The IT side must have certainly helped yeah. to build systems. Uh, I want to ask two, three things. When you talk about consumer, supply chains are broken in India. Uh, the quality of the product. Today, most of us are torn away from nature. Like you yes. said, we, today you need somebody to tell you, oh, this is a ripe mango. People don't even understand how a mango is ripe, you know, when the color formation, they just have touch and feel maybe also, mm. which our mothers passed on to us, our fathers passed on. We've forgotten. We can't tell what's ripe, what's unripe. Right? The quality is very bad. Like, And that's why you do f and on your app. Right? Yes. So I want, us to I want us to know this kind of model. How did you move into this business side of things? Launching the brand and you're well known today. How did you do all that? So it's a very painful process. Yeah. Okay, when we all came out of technology, we thought we understand farming. In fact, we didn't understand. So we also didn't understand need for a capital. First nine years of our journey, we went to six years near to bankruptcy. Okay, how did you fund it? Okay, we all the internal savings. These twenty seven people who came out of Wipro, they okay, you think lo sale kodo dudi lapa on their laksha kodo. Okay. It's exactly how... In the mercy of friends too. Of, okay. yeah. These are the people who took liquidity. Yeah. Amazing people. Yeah, these 27 people. 27 people. Akshay Kalpa is a crowd-funded initiative. Yeah. Nobody believed us what we are doing. Yeah, good to know. Okay. And... Uh, so some of them stuck to their jobs and yes, funded this. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or else you would have gone long back. Okay. And... Um, are they happy now? Now that money has come in? And, yeah, soon. absolutely. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Some of them we exited the, okay, this uh, new round. Uh, new round, round okay, yes. We exited at 20x returns. Absolutely. Okay, and their investment. And I'm happy for that because they helped us. Okay. Um, 2019 was, I think, uh, a year where in which uh, the first investment happened. And one uh, okay investment firm took a bet on us. We had not proven anything. How did you go sell to them? No, I never sold. They came to you. No, no, no. no, no I never made a pitch deck. I never made a business plan. I never made anything. 
Okay. Is that honest? You never made a business plan. I never made a business plan. I never made a pitch deck. I never pitched to anybody. How no, tough was that? People ask for all that, no? See, it it depends. Okay, it depends on your mindset. Okay. So, but every time I used to go to Chennai, I used to go to their office. I had no place to work. I need a bitty place to eat. Okay, I need a bitty place to <laughs> sit and work. Okay, if you go to a cafe, You'll work okay, you know, it's it's a lot of money. I didn't have money, so I used to go to their office, low capital. Okay, every time I used to go, and they were extremely accommodating. From 2014 onwards, every time I went to Chennai, I used to go on in their yeah. office. Mm-hmm. Okay, till 2019, they watched us. Okay, what we are doing, how we are doing. I think maybe his conviction grew. Okay, yeah, that you survived this long. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> Maybe they should take a better. Yes, and, and money changes everything, though, sir. Yes, and uh, uh, at that point of time, you now we are taken company to thirty crore rupees sales. Very nice. Okay. With the with the milk only. With milk, milk only. and I think you've done ghee and uh, yeah, other so, some other products. products. Yeah. We're taken to thirty crore sales. I think they made a, <laughs> a, a investment with us. There was no factory as such, was there, or just no, we, uh, we had a small factory. Okay. We had a small, very very small factory at that point of time in Tipto. Okay. okay, they made investment. <laughs> <laughs> they took a bet on us. Okay, I think absolutely there was no proof that we would succeed. Okay, and they wanted an impact. They are impact investment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, VC. I think you might not know, know them. Low capital. Okay. Yes. And um, so, <laughs> so you, know, you got the first check. Did you know what to do with it? <laughs> okay. First check. There are three and a half crores outstanding. Okay, with the farmers. <laughs> First thing was I cleared. Clear okay. Why are you buying stuff from them or was it the salary? No, no. What happened in 2017? Mm. Okay, company came to shut down. Ten thousand rupees in bank account. At that point of time, I used to work with hundred farmers. I went to these hundred farmers and told, "Is this a situation? Okay. What to do? Okay. I'm, and they start I, with you. Yeah, I'm making okay, fifteen days one payment. Okay, monthly two payments. Mm. What I will do is I will hold one payment back. I will give you one payment every month." Three years they tolerated me. They didn't show up at the doorstep. No, no. no. It was clearly communicated. This is what I'm. There's a trust, no. That's yeah. the reason. Because you were always there. With yes. Them. Okay, and uh, your dad must be super angry. <laughs> yes, <that's him. laughs> okay, and uh, oh, then of course I paid. Okay, to the farmers out of that's farmers. fantastic. So Forty crores have raised. Okay, and I never asked for a valuation. Mm-hmm. Okay, you'll be surprised to know. Okay, we were valued at. Thirty crore rupees sales, fifty crore rupees premium. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. I never went and asked for a valuation. Yeah, which usually people do. Okay, uh, never. Okay, and you know, okay, one day they called me. Hey, you know, as a part of uh, my IC, we need to prepare a business plan. I told, I don't have a business plan. Please help me. <laughs> okay, uh, Rajesh, I still remember. Yeah. Called me. Okay, along with Aditya, we sat, and uh, I started telling all the Akshaykalpa what we do. They wrote the business plan. Nice, nice of them, and yeah. it's done so well. I yeah. mean, I I've already conceded my my children have only Akshay Kalpa, okay. and uh, it's a great thing. The organic story is here to stay. All and you set the context. It's the agroclimatic zones. Yeah. yeah, it's the work that goes into the biodiversity of the soil. It is fantastically done. How tough was the supply chain part? I mean, the the I've written about this 20 years ago. I've written about what I've written about supply chain, that 35% wastage. And no wonder you don't want to sell FNV and other, other platforms because you lose it. Correct. Right? It's not profitable. So see, why is that? See, if there's value loss and nutritional loss. No, the, the challenge is nobody goes and works with him or her, 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 a farmer, a, to make sure there are no losses. Yes. Make sure they produce what market needs. Yes. And what is happening, it is treated as a commodity. You produce and give it to me. Whatever I take, I will take. Remaining, I will reject. That's exactly the models we have been working. And if it is a reject, I will give you a lesser price. So, we need to move away from that. Each and every Akshakalpa farm has a chiller today. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Yeah. And that is how you preserve nutrition. Yeah. That's how you pay additional to farmer. Okay, for doing, preserving that nutrition. Yes. But that's how supply chain needs to be built. It's a very, very deep thought, okay? And every farm, in my opinion, guys who grow fruits and vegetables should have a small chiller. Mm-hmm. And immediately after the harvest, you should wash it and put it to the chiller, pull the temperature down from, okay, when you harvest it, it would be around 30 degrees. You have to pull it around 11 to 12 degrees. So that nutrition is preserved. So that consumer actually can pay better for that. 
So, this is the fundamental support other than... How can, the, how can these uh, Madhyavartik run Karala? Or the middlemen, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. These are the Canada's flowing. So, middlemen, how do you integrate them into this? See, they play amazing role. A yes. lot of time, no, we underestimate the value of the middlemen. Yes. Without them, no, supply chain doesn't work. Agreed. So, the middleman, okay, if he is confident that there's a paying customer, actually he will do that one for farmers. So, this is very, very important. Technically, this is how the supply chains needs to be built. There's an aggregator. Mm -hmm. He aggregates. And he aggregates a quality produce working with farmers. Can aggregators work with you? No, we don't work with them. No, can they come to you for knowledge at least? Yes, mm -hmm. please. They can come any. Mm -hmm. A lot of people... Okay, because they can add value now. No? Not yes. all farmers can have chillers. Yes, this guy buys. And most of them are bundled very badly. Only yes. now do I see some trays coming in. Correct. I see some trucks with trays in the farm. Uh, but that can be done. It's not... Okay, see, basically, the aggregators need to work with farmers. Mm -hmm. Tell them, my customers mm -hmm. want this. Can you grow this? Okay. Yeah. And diver help them to diversify. Okay. Risk, reduce the risk of a farmer. Yes. Okay, and reduce the farm level waste, huh. reduce, okay, grading losses. Hmm. So, all of it can be done actually, okay, farmers actually earn even by simple steps like that, okay, 20 to 30 percent more, yeah. so it is possible. So, I, I think you need support from the government as well here. And what has been your experience uh, with the government talking to them, giving your research, saying, let's do this model, let's be inclusive of the middlemen? And obviously, most of the most of the politicians you'd appreciate come from smaller towns. Yes. I, I hope they understand this. See, the government, okay, giving benefit of doubt, they're doing their bit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Infrastructure. The infrastructure policy, they're building. Yes. They are actually giving okay subventions. Yes. On interest rates. Correct. Okay. And if you are building a coal store, correct. They're giving something almost giving it a zero interest Correct. cost, okay, capital return models. Absolutely, drip ad, they've always yeah. done a good job in that way, right? Drip irrigation yes. was launched many years ago, yes. Karnataka is successful Correct. there. So there have been policies that have been farmer friendly Co always. Cold stores. Yes, cold stores. Okay, and... Uh, why have it, why hasn't it taken off? I mean, I, I even I like it, but today migrations happen in a big way and I feel terrible. Because in spite of that, mm -hmm. farmers don't see a value. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. So government thought creating infrastructure is their job. Mm -hmm. No. Government job is to enabling business models, yeah. mm -hmm. creating a right environment, yeah. creating a right environment for these businesses to flourish. Okay, right now, if we like it or not, there is no environment for a brick and mortar like company yeah. like me to flourish. Yes. Okay, and everywhere you go, there are hurdles. And you need the, to think like that. And these are tax hurdles, mostly, or no, no, are... no, no. Forget about the tax part. I'm not even talking about tax yeah. part. Even okay, at a panchayat level, there mm -hmm. are issues. Okay, even at a district, okay, office. Name uh, a couple of issues, sir. If you if you are, if you want to buy land for industrial purpose <laughs> and you want to convert that one to okay, yeah, uh, chiller. Non, any, non, of no, no, non, not not industry. No, no, okay. Convert into not agriculture. Uh, okay, you know what is the process? It's a huge. Huge seventeen steps. And, yeah, right. and uh, without giving bribe, you can't get it done. That's true. We should call it out. That's okay, true. Okay, call it, it out. Exists. Okay, yes. and uh, and harassment you go through in panchayats. Yes. Every morning they will come and say, "Give me money." Yeah. Where is the money? Even, uh, even if I put myself for auction, there is no money with me. Yeah, absolutely. So, these kind of systems need Should to stop. go. You know, it's interesting that all these things, if you actually structure it in a transparent way of building an institution, yes. even they'll benefit. Yes. They don't realize. They don't realize. So, government from an infrastructure builder to facilitating businesses is not happening. Single window. There's a nonsensical system. You can never ever say in the country, there's no single window. They call it single window. You have to run from one window to 30 windows. Yeah. I said are, 17, but you said 30 yeah, now. Well, okay, well, why? Uh, crazy. crazy. Okay, now to dry ground level water, yeah. you need to have a hydrological report. Mm -hmm. hydrological, hydrological report, okay, re if you do a real hydrological report, it costs 15 to 20 lakhs. Yes. Okay, and then you put up in a DC office and wait for ages. Yeah. Okay, now will any industry survive? It, yeah. will, it will go for dogs. Mm. Yeah. So, therefore, we don't have a intervention. In, intervention. So, therefore, so why are these farming problems are cropping up? Because government, rather than being a, that was a facilitator. Have they stayed in uh, Akshay Kalpa farms? Which one? Have many of them visited and sat there and seen the model that you're building? Yes. They have. Most of them have visited. Okay. A good visit for them, good report for them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and it's done. So, yes, now now to the point, the consumer should start asking. That's yes. when things will change. Correct. <clears throat> so, Shashi's got three models of the consumer. Talks about the Uttama, which is 
the highly informed uh, uh, consumer who basically understands organic and grows organic. He's also a, a, not only a consumer, but also a farmer. Uh, the second is Madhyama, which is people like me okay. who, who are aware, but don't understand farming because we've been taken away from farming for a generation now. And the third is Adama, where people have money, to, but they don't want to understand good farming yes. practices. So you're saying the moment these people start asking, the Adama, which is a large mm. base, start asking that India has a big, huge middle class. They can start saying, well, how is the food grown? Yeah. What have you? What are the inputs in the soil? How what is the biodiversity? Uh, that is what you want people to ask. Yes. See, the fundamental, if you ask, what is the brand's role? Mm -hmm. Akshay Kalpa is a brand role. Yes. He is elevating a Adama yes. to a Madhyama, Madhyama to Uttama. So, enable these people to ask questions. Where was the food grown? Who grew it? At what cost it was grown? What are the soil conditions? What is the pesticides used? What is the okay chemical manure used? Yeah. You tell me as a brand. Without you telling me, I will not buy from you. Then brands become conscious. Because where are the brands making money? They are making, there's a consumer. Yeah, consumer. India they're is meeting the biggest their needs. Story, yeah. yeah. They're meeting their needs. Okay. So therefore, if a brands enable consumers asking these questions, one is a wonderful brand loyalty. Second thing is, you are educating consumer based to migrate from a non-educated, I have money, I can buy food from, hey, I have money, I can buy good food. Yes, that's okay. important. Yes. So, that transition from buying food to buying good food, that has to happen through series of educations, brands have to do it. Okay. And brands, unfortunately, today, they don't do that. Yeah. Okay. They just hide behind a label. And say, so I have declared everything in the label. Like organic coffee. Yeah. Uh, sorry, <laughs> so we get yes. fun yeah, on the uh, supply chain. Okay. And um, <laughs> your, your food has sugar. Your food has emulsifiers. Your food has everything known. Artificial colors. Why are you feeding me that? Yes. Okay. Do something different. No. Yeah. Just writing behind the label yeah, is but... not your job. So it's mandatory. Statutory is telling your writing. Yeah. But how are you how are you educating consumers? Yes. Okay. On these aspects. No. None of the brands are doing. So it starts with the consumer. They have to ask. Yes. And and on, and how do they ask? Platforms. Uh, they are good no, they, places where no, like no, Akshay Kalpa. For example, if if uh, if we are subscribing Akshay Kalpa, you should ask me hmm. why I should buy from you. <laughs> where it is grown? Yeah. Okay. How it is grown? Can I visit a farmer? Hmm. Can I stay hmm. with him? Can I? So these are the questions actually consumers should ask. Mm. You have got a time in a 52 weeks. I, mean, yeah. I just know one thing about Akshay Kalpa that your cows don't eat plastic. <laughs> That's all that matters to me because an average Indian cow has 15 <laughs> kgs to 35 kgs of it's plastic in the stomach. Yeah. yeah. So. so, in a 52 weeks in a year, at least one weekend, you can take out time, visit a farmer, yeah. and understand, understand him. Remaining 51 weekends, do whatever he wants. That's okay, your choice. But go and explore your food. Yeah. Give one weekend in a year. How big is your consumer community in a sense? They can become your word of mouth. Uh, they've done, you, you actually brought people to your farm and yes. they've gone and spoken Last about it. Last one year, we have bought 25,000 consumers of Akshay Kalpa mm. visiting our farms. Mm. They stayed in the farms. Including kids? Yeah, including uh, kids, their children, family, everybody. Mm. They stayed in the farms, mm. seen what is happening. Mm. They understood what is organic farming. Mm. Okay. They have eaten the organic food grown there. Mm. They stayed overnight there. Woken up morning to chirping birds. Mm. Okay, that entire ecosystem they have understood. They come back with that experience. What I was trying to say is these consumers coming there, mm. understanding what's happening in the farm side, and coming back and sharing, okay, with uh, their relatives, friends, etc. It's a very gradual and slow process. Brands need to equip themselves to handle this. Growth is not infinite. Right. We are making a mistake. Every year you can't double. And if that is what okay brands want to do, we are killing farming. If we're killing farming, we're killing consumers. No, killing consumers, or killing farming, and overall entire decimation is happening. Of the ecology. Okay. Absolutely. So, therefore, we need to be realistic. You said the soil quality is close to 0.5, no, or 4, and See, 0.9 is, one means of the, is a desert. Yeah, one of the better way to measure soil quality is soil organic carbon. Hmm. Okay, government recently released report, it says, arable lands, lands mm. where cultivation happens. Mm. In India, organic carbon is 0.4%. Mm -hmm. At a 0.5%, lands are declared as deserts. 
very close okay, no we are already desert mm-hmm. that's what government is telling this is in karnataka no throughout india throughout, throughout india. india okay now to grow anything in these lands external inputs are mandatory chemicals are mandatory that's exactly what this report means it's it's again going back to this gut analogy we've already messed it up and we have to go back how long will it take if we start reviving if we start today see it is not a one year effort two mm-hmm. years effort we should have 100 to 200 years vision and changing back what has happened yeah. if at all we are dreaming overnight we are changing this is not, not going to happen, happen. Yeah. so three four five six generations governments need to have that vision okay people need to have that vision institutions are need to have that vision without that we yeah, can't right. change right. agrarian systems so which change, exist as it today change happens in pockets yes. and uh, i know really wish you all the best but i cannot let you go with two three questions is your father finally happy with 40 million that you raised or does he understand that concept? No, of he doesn't. No, no. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. I have not shared this one with anybody. So Please. yeah, we rise with low capital forty yes. crores. Okay, in two thousand nineteen, in um, uh, in this December, January uh, uh, January twenty twenty four, we exited low capital. Yes. Okay, I went and told my father. See, I took forty crores. Mm. Okay, uh, now we have exited them. His question was, did you give that money back? I told I didn't give you that money back. Somebody else bought the mm-hmm. state. He didn't understand that. <laughs> what did you do with 40 crores? <laughs> <laughs> he thought you bought you. You went and borrowed from someone yeah. else. <laughs> That's a classic okay. Indian father. Okay. Now he says, you're saying somebody else bought it. You you bought 40 crores. I thought you had to return 40 crores. Yeah. And you would probably asked you at what interest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what you're selling. Then he also got second shock was, uh-huh. but... Uh, I raised further money. Uh-huh. So, yeah. how do you, when will you return that money? Okay, so he has got, see, it's a fundamental aspect of running a business. I can, my father is telling, return back that money. Yes. Okay, you have got a duty to return back, but he doesn't understand equity. Okay, yeah, that's, that's okay. Fine. Okay, but he says, if you've taken money, give it back. And uh, uh, so, he generally, we, if he used to borrow 100, 200 rupees, no? He never used to sleep till that money is given back. Every morning reminder, I have borrowed 100 rupees, 200 rupees. So that's the culture they were grown. No, that's a fantastic story. And is he your inspiration or what inspirations did you have as a kid? See, I think the biggest change uh, which happened was my co-founder, mm. Dr. J.N.S. Reddy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, my father couldn't afford my education. Okay. We, in Canada, we call it Mane Pata concept. <laughs> Basically, children go, on, children will go and live in somebody else's yeah. home. They do some work yeah. in their home. Oh, exactly. That's exactly how I studied. My father couldn't afford. He sent you to work and yeah, study. Study in uh, Dr. Jane Sadi's home. And he helped. Yeah. And he was part of BIFE. Mm. I've seen the work what he has done. Mm. Okay. Change. Now the, some of the work what he has done. Okay. And watershed. They are national. Uh, he's a water guy. Yeah? Uh, watershed. Watershed okay. is basically how do you rainwater harvest. Yeah. I told you know three acre one farm farm. Mm. Integrate the crops. Okay. You should he's go, done that? Yeah. No. You should go to Mainland village near Arsikare, see the change. It was done 30 years back. You can see the impact. Is he still now. around? No, he no. passed away last January. Uh-huh. Okay, so I studied this. That's my first so, inspiration. So he is your inspiration. Inspiration. Okay. And second person was, I read this book, okay, uh, One Star Revolution, okay, by a Japanese farmer called Masanobu Fukuoka. Mm. One simple, Star Revolution. Yeah. Mm. So simple book, okay, and um, it changes your perspective of farming, changes your perspective of life changes your perspective of how, okay, the modern way of thinking, okay, mm. has actually decimated the way we understand nature. So, that's a great book. Anybody actually who are serious about food, serious about farming, serious about, okay, um, uh, nature, they should read that book. One straw okay. revolution. Yeah. And, you know, for you to transform yourself individually from an engineer to going back to your burning desire to become a farmer, and becoming a businessman must have taken a toll. Yes, it has taken a... So I didn't realize in initial stages, I didn't realize. I didn't add money. Okay, yeah. though. Unfortunately, that's how okay uh, it all gets started. But uh, over a period of time, it has taken a huge toll on health. Mm. Okay, and uh, no entrepreneur should do that. Okay, in my uh, request is, I think we need to be a little bit moderated on the extremities we can go. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think you push the boundaries yes we push the boundaries we, without money we push that boundaries and that's what makes it fruitful now no 
Yes, that's what a lot of people say, but I don't know, to be honest. Uh, um, for example, first nine years, okay, I didn't even take one rupee from Akshay Kalpa. Yeah. Okay, and... Somebody in Atsavara, 10,000 rupees monthly? No. No, nothing. I, one rupee, I didn't take. Shilpa, my wife, hmm. okay, saw this situation. Hmm. She became a lecturer in Tiptur Engineering College. To help you. Or to help the family. It's phenomenal. Okay, and uh, she made, okay, hmm. technically if you want me to give credit to this one, actually she is the right <laughs> okay, person. Okay, she made family survive. And uh, Shrey is my son, we home educated because one of the reasons was modern education I can't afford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we Does that change all that now? No, it's, it's, it doesn't. Actually, we have got too much deep into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Shrey has 18 years, we home educated him. We never went to any so school. So he's a farmer? College. No, recently he joined college. He did his BA philosophy. Okay. He wants to be a teacher. Good for okay, him. Okay, so that's all. No, right. and teaching as it is, Akshay Kalpa yes. can teach millions yes. of young kids who have forgotten farming to get back to farming. So uh, they can just reach out to the Akshay Kalpa yes. farm or... Uh, no, they can just drop in, go to okay. the website. Okay. There's a farm visit program. Okay. Just, just okay. enroll, enroll, come in. Enroll and come in. Okay, mm -hmm. and see what we are doing. And then start. Just start yes, yeah. uh, getting back to farming. That's it, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank Ashi, you. You're wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.